Breaking news from Dean Johnson. Uh, this is from yesterday, but this is a bombshell story, guys. Uh, for you, Peter, uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff Worldwide UAP Phenomenon Reporting Procedures, including what looks like UFO crash retrievals, uh, and Arrow is involved in some of this. A really juicy story. So let's talk about that and a whole lot else. It's time for another UFO News Roundup. So get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, here we go from Douglas uh, Dean Johnson. On Monday, uh, excuse me, on, on May 19th, 2023, the Joint uh, Staff, uh, J3 Operations, J36 Homeland Defense Division of the Joint Chiefs of Staff disseminated to all unified military commands worldwide a set of uniform procedures to be followed for gathering data and reporting on contemporary military encounters with UAP using a detailed standard reporting template. Uh, yeah, and this is the actual uh, um, uh, document in question. And it's just it's so interesting. It's so interesting, guys. Um, yeah, the, uh, okay, let's just, I mean, I, I'm not going to go over this whole thing. I'll let you go over it at your leisure. Uh, but yeah, here, here's, here's some juicy stuff. The U.S. government has observed UAP in or near uh, the territory and or operating areas of the United States, of its allies, and of its ad adversaries, and observing, identifying, and potentially mitigating UAP has become a growing priority for U.S. policymakers, lawmakers, and warfighters. The potentially ubiquitous presence of UAP defines the national security implications of those anomalies, which range from operational hazards and threats to technological and intelligence surprise to adversaries' strategic miscalculations. It is imperative that DOD provide UAP incident, incursion, and engagement reporting data and material for the department's detection and mitigation of potential threats, exploitation of advanced technologies, and informing policymaker and warfighter decisions. That's huge, guys. Huge mitigation. Are they talking about shooting at UFOs? What does mitigation mean? Obviously, exploitation, you would think, uh, would involve recovering the UFOs that they just shot down by mitigating them. Uh, and then they're supposed to tell policymakers. They're supposed to tell our politicians about this. A UAP engagement is defined as a kinetic or non-kinetic response to a UAP intended to deny, disrupt, or destroy the phenomenon and or its objects. So kinetic means shooting at them. So yeah, an engagement is defined as shooting at them or not shooting at them. The ultimate nexus of collection and analysis of these reports is Arrow. Arrow is collating these reports. Meanwhile, they're pushing a UFO report to the public that denies the existence of UFOs. They're saying nothing to see here. All UFOs can be explained, even the ones that we haven't explained yet. If we had better sensor data, we could explain them and they would have a mundane cause. There are no such things as UFOs. That's what the Arrow report says. Meanwhile, they are collating all of these reports of shooting down UFOs and recovering material. Ah, it's so crazy, guys. It's so crazy. Anyway, yeah, also about Arrow. Arrow will coordinate the handling of any UAP objects and material of incidents, intrusions, and engagements, but recovery and transfer of identifiable non-anomalous items of foreign origin continue to be managed by the DOD. So that means Arrow gets all the anomalous stuff. Am I reading that right? Am I reading that right, guys? So Arrow is actively engaged in UFO crash retrievals and reverse engineering. Is that why there are members or former members, former members of the UFO control group as part of the secret advisory board to Arrow? Oh my God, guys, this is huge. This is huge. Anyway, it's, it's, it's a long article. I will let you read the full thing at your leisure, but this is great reporting from Dean Johnson. Uh, this uh, uh, FOIA Petert, 
For you pay dirt guys, this is massive. I love it. Meanwhile, people have been digging into that Arrow report. Uh, this is from Joey is not my name. Uh, just quoting from Arrow. Uh, and, uh, talking about Michael Herrera. This seems to be the Michael Herrera portion of the Arrow report. Uh, an interviewee who is a former U.S. service member said that in 2009, while participating in a humanitarian and security mission in a foreign country, Indonesia, he encountered U.S. Special Forces loading containers onto a large extraterrestrial spacecraft. So that's a lie from Arrow. It's either gross incompetence or a lie. And I don't accuse Arrow of gross incompetence. I accuse them of lying their asses off. Uh, but yeah, uh, Mike Herrera never said U.S. Special Forces. He never said who those guys were. He, he may not know who those guys were. Uh, I don't know if now that he's had later uh, information given to him that maybe now he has a better idea. Uh, but, you know, he has not said who those guys were. And uh, it doesn't appear to be U.S. Special Forces. At least they weren't marked. My guess is the, the Department of Energy because that's who uh, Jonathan Wigand, Lance Corporal Jonathan Wigand, uh, was seeing some years ago. So uh, they seem to have up their game a little bit, and now they don't wear insignia. Uh, so you know, my guess is Department of Ener Energy, possibly some sort of mercenary group, but you know we don't know. I mean, it could have been special forces, but they, they weren't marked. So that's a lie from Arrow. Uh, also, Mike has been very explicit in saying it was not an extraterrestrial spacecraft. It was a man-made and man-operated, you know, spacecraft. Uh, it was a spacecraft, uh, but it was not an extraterrestrial uh, vehicle. So these are two more lies from Arrow. Kona Blue Coffee. The best blends are kept secret, says the lovely Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. Meanwhile, Dr. Jim Segala has done a three-year study on UAP, and he's got some amazing results, guys. This is really incredible stuff. I haven't watched this full video yet. I, I, I need to get on that. Uh, but what I'm seeing so far is just mind-blowing because he's able to predict when UAP encounters are going to take place. Uh, over the past three years, our study has grown to include an extensive collection of enthusiastic participants from the Uintah Basin. Yeah, this is centered around Skinwalker Ranch, as well as other areas of, US, of the USA where strange phenomenon is known to occur. Over 3.5 terabytes of data has been recorded by scientific instruments in the Uintah Basin alone. Over 600 documented interactions with the phenomenon has been conducted or documented by our participants that uh, correlations to environmental readings taken using collaborated uh, scientific instrumentation. Uh, four high capacity servers are now online collecting the data for the study. Statistical accuracy predicting the occurrence of an interaction has grown to over 4.8 sigma. I don't know what a sigma is. You guys let me know. Uh, yeah, and they're, they're continuing to study this and add participants of their study. Uh, this is just uh, really amazing stuff, guys. You can predict UAP encounters. And that's what I've shared with you before. There have been... <clears throat> People that can video UFOs and interact with UFOs, even kind of summon UFOs. And uh, some of them, not all of them, but there have been a couple of examples where they can, they know the times of day when the UAP will show up in certain days that they will show up, uh, that they are predictable in certain ways. You know, they're anomalous. You wouldn't think they would be so predictable. But apparently they are, guys. And Dr. Jim Segala is doing a detailed scientific study uh, getting to the bottom of some of this. So I love it. I can't wait, wait to watch this full video. Meanwhile, in my ongoing coverage of the elongated skull people, I've just recently discovered there were elongated skull people in Iran as well. Check this out. Grave of ancient elongated skulls discovered in Iran. A cache of strange elongated skulls has been unearthed in the Zora Plain in southwest Iran at an archaeological site known as Tol-e-Chiga-Safla. 
I said that right. You know I said that right. Archaeologist Abbas Magadam. Oh my God, these names. Ah, I give up. Uh, Abbas. Archaeologist Abbas stated at Tol E. Chagasafla, the concentration of deformed skulls and grave BG1 is striking. We will discuss this enigm enigmatic grave more below. But first, let's learn more about this ancient site, says StrangeVoyager.com. But let's just skip to the good stuff. This site flourished approximately 4700 to 3700 BC. At Toli Chegasofla, the concentration of deformed skulls in grave BG1 is striking. And look at these elongated skulls. Does that look like something that could be made by skull binding? I mean, look at those. Look at those. Look at that insane skull, guys. Look at that thing. That's Crazy. Why were most of these elongated skulls found only in BG1 and not spread throughout all the other graves? Might these have been a ruling class at some point in this area? And that's what I reported on before in the excellent remote viewing of Teotihuacan. Uh, the elongated skull people seem to be the god kings of the peoples of that time. And uh, yeah, and uh, at a certain point in their history, there was a revolution or war and uh, that culture that occupied Teotihuacan left or fled. And, you know, we don't know what happened to those people afterwards, but we do know that elongated people, you know, I have been found in Paracas. Are those the same? We don't know. Uh, yeah, according to the archaeologist, seven female skulls aged between 9 to 30 years old and five male skulls aged between 17 to 25 years old uh, were deformed. Then it talks a little bit about the Paraca skulls. There are two different types of skulls found among the Maraca skulls. These are the skulls that are elongated simply due to cranial deformation or head binding. One on this type of skulls, except for the skull elongation, everything looks similar to our skulls as of today. But then there are the skulls we call natural elongated skulls. Uh, these are the ones that feature crazy anatomical genetic differences, and these were likely the nobles and royalty of the Paracas culture. These natural elongated skulls feature much larger jaw bones and eye sockets that are up to 50% larger than normal human skulls. These are also missing the sagittal suture, the fibrous connective tissue joints between the two uh, paratal plates, that run down the center of our back, uh, of the back of our skulls. Many of these elongated skulls, cranial volume is up to 25% larger than conventional human skulls. They've got bigger brains, guys. They've got bigger brains. It's crazy. And according to the remote viewing of Teotihuacan, they also had fantastic abilities. Maybe that is what the skull binding of humans was meant to emulate. Maybe the people, the humans, were trying to give themselves these fantastic abilities by doing this. Or maybe if these guys, these elongated skull people, were in charge, maybe they thought they were better looking than the regular humans, and they encouraged the humans to do this to be more like them. We just don't know, but the elongated skull people uh, were real, and they were all over the world, uh, seeming to serve high places in society. This is huge. This is fascinating. This is every bit as important and interesting as the Nazca mummies. And I love it. And also the elongated skull people in Paracas were not very far at all from Nazca. And they were occupying roughly the, the same time period as well. So there's probably some interaction, you would think, between the beings of Nazca, who also had a global presence, and the elongated skull people of Paracas. Uh, there are some wonderful mysteries here, guys. I, I would love to know the truth about what was really going on back in the day. Meanwhile, an, an elephant comes to visit its elderly human friend in the hospital. That's right. That's right. Look at that. Oh. I think I've got some allergies, guys. Got some allergies, guys. Oh, come on. Look at that. Who wouldn't have allergies? Meanwhile, on the Jeff Mara podcast, this alien contactee says that he was shown by the beings uh, when they made a deal with his higher self in some sort of pre-life contract 
uh, that he will work with them during this life. Uh, he goes on to talk at great length about the alien's involvement uh, in humanity and what the gray alien agenda is, uh, and also how they interact uh, with beings on the other side. It's really interesting. Uh, he also says they appear corporeal on the other side. Uh, as opposed to you know, their souls being on the other side. I found that really interesting. It, it, it ties in with another piece of research I did, or uh, came across, rather, uh, that suggested that some beings don't have souls in the way that we do. Our souls allow us to leave our body in, you know, uh, you know, we can have multiple bodies, uh, you know, uh, and uh, reincarnation and all that kind of stuff, uh, if you believe in that. Uh, but they actually don't need to do that because their bodies can tran traverse dimensions uh, and it's a little complicated. Uh, I, don't, I don't quite understand how all of that works. If their body's destroyed, what happens? Uh, but uh, either way, uh, that uh, interesting uh, piece of information there, uh, if that is to be believed, seems to suggest there's different paradigms, right? Uh, that we, you know, our souls operate by one paradigm, but maybe some of the beings operate by different paradigms. I thought that was interesting because it kind of dovetailed with uh, this gentleman's uh, information. But yeah, he was seeing uh, the beings interacting with people in the afterlife and what their ultimate agenda here is on Earth and why they uh, do hybrids. They uh, hybridize people in part to colonize other star systems, which also goes uh, well with the uh, hypnotic regression uh, Barry Littleton did. And I shared with you that the other day. Uh, that's the information they were giving, given uh, the abductees about why their genetic tissue is being taken was to uh, populate other star systems. Uh, but this gentleman also talks about the hybrids here on Earth and that they are uh, basically meant to replace us uh, not necessarily as a hostile takeover, but because we're not taking care of the planet very well. And uh, that is, the beings are very concerned about the custodianship of the planet. Uh, so I, you know, I think that if that is true and that if that is a goal of the aliens, maybe they could give us a little more time. We're working on it, guys. We're working on it. We've got clean energy technology, you know, coming out, you know, slowly in fits and starts. We've got all sorts of techn new technologies that could really help with uh, a lot of these environmental issues. Give us more time before the hybrids come out of their caves or their uh, warehouses or whatever, whatever and, and populate the planet. Uh, yeah, so this is my appeal to the great aliens. Hang in there. S stay frosty, but hang in there. We got this. Just give us more time. Okay, but I will let you watch this full interview at your leisure. As always, take these things with a grain of salt. The beings tell different people different things at different times. So, you know, who knows what the ultimate truth is. It would be wonderful if the phenomenon were 100% honest 100% of the time. But the phenomenon is not necessarily that. Last but not least, uh, from SundayWorld.com, uh, Irish UFO expert says new footage is key to flying saucer mystery. Uh, very intriguing. Rare footage has emerged on St. Patrick's weekend, weekend, which supports the UAP Global Defense Network theory, an Irish ex expert has told the Sunday World. NASA held a public hearing in Washington last June regarding spherical UFOs, or UAP, the meeting heard details of how metallic orb UFOs have been spotted all over the world. Irishman Patrick Jackson believes he potentially has the answer to the mystery and the, has the backing of certain retired U.S. Air Force pilots and academics. A video obtained by the Sunday World shows an interaction and explosion taking place in the sights of a telescope. All right. Something orbiting that planet over there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's something orbiting that planet over there. See it? Okay, I'm seeing something. I'm seeing something. All right. There's, there's... I'm not sure what's going on here. Yeah, me either. What's going on? A 10-inch 
light bridge made by Mead. I'm going to be filming that planet just right there. Okay. Now check this out. I've never seen this before, and I'm actually surprised my phone's doing this. But uh, check this out. Oh my God! It blew up. What the hell? Something just blew the hell up. So it was orbiting, and now it blew up, and it's in outer space, and it's no longer there. Okay. Intriguing. Intriguing. So what's the upshot, upshot of this? Uh, we are seeing the sphere intercept process in the upper atmosphere. Sky watchers have seen this for years, but they normally see it randomly through night scopes or telescopes, and they never get a chance to record it. The IT specialist who has written a book detailing his theory, Quantum Paranormal, describes what the public can do if they want to see it for themselves. Uh, yeah, okay, so we're seeing a takedown of a UFO. Is that the idea here? That is wild, guys. That is wild. So, yeah, there may be a global defense network taking down UFOs, which I guess should surprise nobody since they're shooting down UFOs here on Earth. Why wouldn't they be shooting down UFOs in space? So let me know what you think about that and everything else covered today in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Smash the subscribe button and, of course, the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Discord links below. Love to see you guys there. If you wanted to support Cosmic Road in a bigger way, please consider grabbing a coffee mug or a t-shirt in the merch store below or by becoming a channel member. Channel members are rock stars and I really appreciate you guys support. Or heck, I'm a novelist. I write science fiction, fantasy books. Uh, you can uh, buy some of my books uh, at the link below. There's plenty of other videos on the channel, and I will see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road, signing out.